So what we're doing in this chapter two is what's happening is one company, a big company, a parent company, is purchasing a smaller company, a subsidiary. What does the accountant need to do in that sort of scenario? Well, the accountant needs to record all of the assets of the subsidiary on the parent's books. So, pretty simple. Find your, your subsidiary uh, book values, add them to the parent company. But we're using an acquisition method, the acquisition method specifically, and that allows us to report the subsidiary's uh, figures at their fair value and not at their book value. And, and that's especially important because what if you bought this company and its book values were huge, astronomical, but, I don't know, everything became obsolete and it actually, its fair value was way less than its book value. If the parent were to record that subsidiary at its book value, it would be kind of cheating the system. And fair value is fair value. I mean, it's, it's more accurate than book value, always, unless you're uh, fraudulent. Anyway, I'm reading up here where it says Allerton. Allerton Company acquires all deluxe companies' assets and liabilities uh, for cash on January 1st, 2011 and subsequently formally dissolves Deluxe. So Allerton is the parent company and Deluxe is the subsidiary company which is being bought out and it's being dissolved. Deluxe is no longer going to exist. This is called a merger. You know, it's an acquisition. You're buying all of the assets for cash. Okay, at the acquisition date, the following book and fair values were available for the Deluxe company accounts. Um, and here you can see the current assets. It has sixty thousand dollars, and its fair value is sixty thousand too. You got building, you got land on there, you got trademark, which isn't actually recorded in the book value, but Deluxe does have a trademark, and it should be valued at about thirty thousand uh, dollars. It's a good trademark. Um, we got goodwill, uh, but notice that fair value of that goodwill. It's kind of a question mark. That's because we have to solve that in our little problem. We have to figure out how much goodwill is in the company. Let me really quick go over what goodwill is. Goodwill is just like an account. It's like a fluffy account that isn't really a tangible thing. Um, it's, okay, this company has a worth. It has a value that we can't really identify as a specific asset, but we know it's there. It's like the employees. They're super exceptional. They're better than all other employees in the firm. Uh, that would be goodwill. You, you don't have an account for employees uh, on the balance sheet. Uh, then let's go down. We see liabilities, uh, and then we see the owner's equity area, common stock, and retained earnings. Cool. Very cool. I'll continue with the problem. Using the acquisition method, prepare Allerton's entry to record its acquisition of Deluxe in its accounting records, assuming the following cash exchange amounts. And then the first one is $145,000 is the hypothetical payment that Allerton, up top, paid to buy Deluxe. Uh, and then the second hypothetical amount that they want you to figure is $110,000. let us start with the $145,000. So, um... Allerton Company acquires all of Deluxe Company's assets and liabilities for cash. The cash amount is $145,000. The question says, prepare the uh, Allerton's accounting entries to record the acquisition. So, right off the bat, you know cash is one of the accounts being used. Uh, and it's going to be, you're losing the cash, so you credit the cash for $145,000. May as well just write that here. Uh, cash. Dot 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 dot. One forty-five. Yeah, some more entries. Well, what's the accountant got to do? He's got to take all of the book values, uh, all of the accounts of the company, and add them to the parent company. Oh, by the way, for these records, these journal entries, you got to title them now because you have a parent and you have a subsidiary. Uh, what is another entry that we're going to have to make as an accountant? when you are buying this company, you know, all of its assets. Well, if you bought the assets, it's just, think of it as a simple sale. Um, you would add 
you guessed it, current assets. Because you bought them for cash. Uh, current assets purchased increase by 60,000. We can just say 60,000 without me saying, oh, you have to use book value or, oh, you have to use fair value because they're both the same. Book value of current assets is 60,000 as is fair value. Now let's get down to the building and you'll see ne that's the next entry. Building. And how much do we increase building for? Well, I expressed earlier that uh, fair value is what you use because it's just a better way to do it. Certainly with acquisition method, not sure about uh, whatever other mouse, purchase method. I can't find my notes on that, and I'm just not going to look at the book until I do. Land is the next thing that we're going to deal with. So, uh, and you guessed it, 20,000. It's how much land we bought. So that's the fair value. Uh, the fair value of the trademark is 30,000. So go ahead, write that down. Uh, I, now you got goodwill. What do you record goodwill? Goodwill is that intangible thing you know that the company is worth. How do you calculate goodwill? Um, goodwill equals um, excess equals how much you paid for to acquire the building, uh, the company, minus uh, the net identifiable assets. So NIA <laughs> equals net identifiable assets w equals, notice I said net, so that's assets minus liabilities, but not counting goodwill. You don't count goodwill. That's not a net identifiable asset. A trademark, yeah, that's identifiable. It's not exactly tangible, but it is identifiable. Um, goodwill that's kind of like a fluffy little account you make, you put in there to make yourself feel good after the acquisition of a business that you paid too much for. We could use that definition. Um, so, net identifiable assets are current assets, building, land, trademark, skip goodwill, minus liabilities. Uh, and it's the fair value, obviously. Excess, let's just call it E for now, equals, so I'm using these figures here, 60,000 plus 50, plus 20, plus 30, uh, minus 40 for the liabilities, and then you have 120. That's the net identifiable assets. So our payment was 145. You see bottom where it says 1, 145. Yeah, let's just do that. Minus, I said 120 up there, 120. Thousand. And that's our excess value, which comes to about 25. So you got $25,000 in your excess. That's how much you paid in addition to how much it's worth, which you can identify. Not identifiable assets. There's lots more in later chapters that complicate this, but the amount that you paid that isn't allocated in addition to the worth of the whole company is the goodwill. So you record 25,000 goodwill on Allerton's books. And don't forget the liabilities because we, we acquired the liabilities. 40,000 is the fair value of the liabilities. And that all balances. Um, I see this column here, add that all up. I see this column here, add that all up, put them both here. Um, it's this side is going to be equal to 185. That's very readily visually identifiable. 185,000 in this column. You're also going to have 185,000 in this column. If that is not the case, then you have done something wrong. Um, there you go. Now, why do we have goodwill? Because, well, let's say we didn't have goodwill uh, at all. Let's just say we added the goodwill on the, the book value of the goodwill and we didn't take account fair value then it wouldn't balance. This side is 10,000 less than this side when you sum the columns. Uh, I, now, if you want to go ahead, solve it for part two, plug in 110,000 for the payment. 